Hey guys, welcome in 9 episode of Frontend News Podcast. Today we have 5 news for you. Each of them is amazing. But first, let's see the intro. Okay, but what are the news without our lovely speaker? I'm here with Tomasz. Hey, Tommy. Hey. How's your week? Hey, Chris. It was quite okay. It was quite fine. Uh, Nothing to complain about. But maybe one small detail I want to mention. I'm not a speaker. I am a podcaster. Thank you. Okay. (laughs) I lost my flow, <laughs> so let's go straight to the news. The first one is gonna be about Babel 7.14 release. The second one, it's about the Redux updates. Next, we will talk about Vue.js dropping support for EA11. The fourth one is about Strapi and internationalization and what's in common. And the last one about Firefox release. Guys, get ready to rumble. Of course. <laughs> Go ahead, Tomasz. <laughs> cool. So, as Chris mentioned, the first news is about uh, the bubble release and the new version is 7.14. The biggest news is the bubble team decided to enable the uh, class fields and private methods by default. And this has been moved to the stage 4 and this will be included in the ECMAScript 2022. So for now, before it will happen, we need to use the bubble. And yeah, that's the biggest news from uh, what's inside. And obviously, as always, if you want to check more, just uh, take a look into the release notes. Uh, We have all the links in the description. Am I correct, Chris? Of course you are. Great. Tomasz, stage four sounds amazing. What are those stages? Uh, We've got like uh, different stages for how the ECMAScript is being developed and uh, it's like from zero to four and each of the stages has own rules and own purpose of why it exists. Okay, so for example, the stage zero are some proposals of the JavaScript updates that, uh, yeah, that need to be uh, deeply checked and, uh, you know, developed more. And it's not uh, being said that if something in is in stage zero, it will be included into the final release. Okay. So it's just different stages, you know, different validations. And yeah, that, that's why we have those different stages. Sounds good. Thank you, Tomasz, for explanation. Great. Uh, so now let's go to the Redux update. Yeah, so uh, for those who are familiar with uh, the React environment, probably uh, you met uh, Redux on your way. Of course. Did you use did. Redux? Yeah, like everyone. A couple years ago. A <laughs> couple years ago. Yeah, it depends on the project. We have all, yes. Yeah, we have uh, the React context. Uh, we have, for example, uh, observers. Yes, am I correct? Some mobex. They're always correct, Tomasz. Thank you, Chris. It's really nice to hear that. Uh, yeah, we have a new version of the Redux. It's 4.1. One of the biggest changes inside is that now we can extract the error messages like similar way uh, we have in React. And the messages will be displayed in the development mode, like full info, full information about the error that has appeared in our state manager. Okay. Um, but in production, we will receive uh, the error code, the specific code we can check in the Redux documentation. Yeah, that's that's the biggest change. Uh, of course, there are some smaller improvements, uh, changes, updates that are worth to check. Um, so as always, open the release notes. Links are in description. Guys, what else? So we know everything about Redux. I mean, from the latest update at least. <laughs> so now, Tomasz, explain us why this Vue.js and Angular dropped the support for EA11. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, just kidding. Yeah, I know uh, that um, most of you guys remember the days when we need to support Internet Explorer 7, 8, 9. You remember those? Yeah. And uh, and so on. Um, so for now, you know, we received the Edge uh, browser that is the next gen browsers from the Microsoft family. Let's call it next gen. The time has come. It was a long time with the Internet Explorer, but now 
nowadays. More and more tools, uh, plugins, technologies, you know, are dropping dropping the support for the Internet Explorer at all. And the View 3 um, and Tailwind UI library um, and Angular, they finally drop the support for the Internet Explorer 11. So if you guys are planning to uh, create an app that will need to work on uh, Internet Explorer 11, you want to use the newest version of those, those tools and your code will be legacy code, start from the beginning. So you need to make a decision. Is it worth to start the development for Internet Explorer nowadays? I think not, but that's my opinion. That is your opinion, obviously, but sometimes we need to do this. So I'm wondering how about React? Are they still supporting uh, Internet Explorer or they dropped it? As um, well? So according to your question, React support still supports the Internet Explorer 11, but I believe that uh, in the nearest future, they will also decide to drop the support. Okay, so let's go to the Strapi. Yeah, um, Strapi version 3.6. Yeah, this is uh, the newest version of the Strapi, but uh, first thing first, I believe most of you uh, have used um, the CMS, for example, WordPress, which was really famous and is still very famous. Is uh, it? I, I think it's like more headless time today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. This is the keyword headless CMS and Strapi is the great, great example of the headless CMS we can use and uh, accommodate into our projects. And it's really worth to check. It gives all the tools we need to manage our content and work with it. Um, so what's more, it's really easy to integrate. Uh, I, I know we use it with the Next.js projects, for example. Yeah, it is very easy and we use it for every project at Leaky and in Frontend House. Um, yeah, and, and it does the job. It does. <laughs> it does the trick. It does the trick, exactly. From now on, uh, we have the internationalization being included in Strapi out of the box. They go one step further and it means that we can group um, the internationalization translations not only by the language, certain language, but also um, by the country. So for example, we can set French for Canada and for France. Uh, yeah, that's one of the examples. Or let's say Spanish for, uh, for Spain and Brazil. Okay, Tomasz, great to hear. Uh, so we are going to use it much more often. Yeah, I believe so. Um, yeah, next thing, uh, it will be the Firefox. Yeah, Firefox 88, go ahead. So we've got the 88 Fox in the family. And three updates, three main updates. Yeah, three main updates from the Firefox. So the first one is uh, from the PDFs documents. Start from now, uh, we received the JavaScript support for PDFs uh, embedded files. Really? So, yeah. So we're gonna write JavaScript in PDF. That's true. We can. Are we use... going to make websites in PDFs? <laughs> Maybe not websites, but we can add some interactivity layer over the PDFs. So, for example, you can have some uh, interactive forms inside the documents. Okay. Uh, so user can play with it, and you can describe the behavior. Nice. Cool, yeah. The second thing is that we received the print updates. The margin units has been now localized. It means that uh, depending on where are you from, uh, you will open the print settings in millimeters or in inches. The third thing is that uh, we got the smooth print zooming functionality being fixed on the Linux. Finally. So, yeah, finally. So all the Linux users, now you can use the Firefox with all the features. And that's it. Amazing. Thank you, Tomasz. Thank you, Chris. Guys, that's it for today's news. Uh, we have bad news and good news for you. The bad news is that there is no tips and tricks and curated project session this time. But the good news is Tomasz will prepare amazing, amazing tips and tricks for the next time. And myself gonna create amazing curated project. But for the next time. See you guys there. See ya.